you strong. But right now we have two very special guests, welcome guests into the studio. Hi. Becky Frost, who is the lead development worker at Development Plus, who is going to be talking about Project Compass. Welcome, Becky. Hi, nice and, to meet you. And her colleague, CJ. Hi. Good to see you both. You too. So, what is Project Compass? Well, it's quite hard to say, you know, very quickly because we do so much, but essentially what we are is a, a drop-in service for anybody who finds themselves in a position in Lincoln where they're rough sleeping um, and we can assess that person and we can offer advice and signposting to try and get them on the journey that would would lead towards some accommodation so we work with lots of other agencies to do that and, and you sorry Julie and you founded this I believe yes yes I did <laughs> so five years ago what gave you the idea to sort of found it so just before I started the project, I was asked, myself and a colleague um, at Development Plus, to, to kind of look at what was going on in Lincoln City and why there seemed to be so many people out and about. Were they homeless? You know, why did we seem to have a um, high level of drug use and antisocial behaviour? So I spent six months with my colleague doing that study. And um, towards the end of that um, period, when we were talking to lots of people who were rough, rough sleeping in the town, we found that they were using um, a fast food chain in town to charge their phones and wash their feet and meet each other and talk about how they, they needed to get to the council and all those kinds of things. And so at the end of the project, when we came away from that, we thought, actually, that's not acceptable, is it, for a big city like Lincoln to be using a, a burger bar as somewhere for the homeless to, to gather themselves and get some basic services. And there's not much dignity in that either. So I decided just to start something myself. Good, and I believe that uh, Project Compass has just obtained three years' worth of funding, which must be uh, a joy to hear for you, mm -hmm. and is launching an impactful alternative giving scheme which promises to help the homeless in numerous ways. But what, what does all that mean? Okay, so the funding means that we haven't got to be scrabbling around after every six months that, that we're running. It means that there's some security in terms of paying staff and, and looking after our building and all those kinds of things. So that, that means that we can breathe, which is excellent. And the alternative giving campaign is something that CJ has led on, um, my colleague here. And it's really to try and help people who don't know what to do when they see people who are rough sleeping. And, and obviously it tugs at the heartstrings for everybody, but then there's this question, do I give them money? Am I not supposed to give them money? Hence the alternative giving campaign, which I think... Well, I've got to ask you then, CJ, yeah. what is your alternative giving scheme? So it's really um, an outlet for people to um, support Lincoln's Rough Sleepers. So we are um, essentially saying if you don't know how to help or you want to help and you don't know what that looks like, then um, we're here to kind of hold your hand with that, essentially. So whether that is... Um, you know, quite frequently um, we talk about the kind of donations and things that we're looking for and um, so that the items that we're getting for the guys are things that we actually really need rather than just kind of bits and pieces that people are just chucking out so we can kind of really shoehorn those those requirements that we have and also when it comes to things like funds and and small change which I, which I know people want to kind of often want to give in the street or they um you know this time of year it's very hard to walk past people if they're asking for money and kind of turn away we're not encouraging people to do that but i know it doesn't always make people feel comfortable so we're giving people an avenue to be able to share and spend their loose change and know that it is going towards um 100 percent of it will be going towards yeah. helping helping these people um, and we do that either via um so online via like a QR code which we've set up so people can donate using that link. So if they were to Google something, what would what would they look at Project Compass or Yeah, so we have um we have links to those those codes are all over our social media and um when we first started the alternative giving campaign um there was a run of um posters and things that were put up in town in quite in some of the sort of mm. popular places. So like some of the takeout places and um some of the fast food change places like that. Um so people can see that. Um, I think even a few banks and things have them in. And you've got new premises as well, haven't you? Where, yeah, where are that's they? That's right. So we're now located at 97 High Street, which is um, way past the train tracks, down opposite Scorer Street. So it's it's a nice um, sort of central location for us. It's handy um, for sort of 
it's sort of five minutes walk from the high street and, and can people call in there if either they want to donate or they need help they can yeah um both i mean we we have a lot of people walking past that that know what we do now we've been there since august so they're they're kind of dropping in and saying oh you know i've i've, I've got a couple of coats would that help that's always really useful it's always good to kind of check in yeah. um, and see what we need because we sort of go through um days where we have lots of one thing maybe given and we don't have often other things so it's always good to just kind of see what what oh, we need what sort of things if people want to donate items as opposed to money what sort of things are you looking we're for? we're always looking for things like um men's jogging bottoms are the things that we go through really really frequently and um, obviously we get a lot of donations of, of trousers and which is we're always really grateful for but things like jeans aren't always so great they're not that comfortable and no. if you get wet and get stuck mm -hmm. in them um, you know that they, they they really feel horrible. So really, really simple, warm, soft clothing. We always say is is it goes down a tree in you know cotton t-shirts, nice, not overly synthetic materials, things that people can kind of. Breathe in. I've got to sort of say, you know, when we've sort of been walking around town and you see somebody, a homeless, well, in inverted commas, a homeless person who's, for want of a better expression, begging for sort of money. Um, you do wonder, you know, is it a genuine sort of request for food or is it a request to maybe subsidize some other um habit habits that they have you know and and it, it is for somebody uh, isn't it it's very it's very hard because there must be some very genuine people out there and there's also people hold on a second i can sort of fund the drug habit here mm -hmm. by you know sort of asking for a few pounds oh, and we're aware of that and yeah. that's one of the reasons that we wanted to start the alternative giving campaign because you you can't possibly know the pub the public can't possibly no. know who is really genuine and who is um possibly catching a train or a bus into lincoln to make quite a lot of money because it is it can be quite lucrative and there are people who make a full-time job of it we don't expect the public to know and obviously we can't tell them who's genuine and who's not mm. so this alternative giving campaign can give you reassurance that all of the the change that you text or qr to us will go to people who are genuinely street homeless in lincoln okay. and those people are all able to access us um to have breakfast lunch and a takeaway tea so actually you don't even need to do things like provide food or hot drinks because certainly during the day they can access them with us mm, okay let's take a break for a short break for some music and um becky you've chosen kate bush yes enjoy I still dream. there with cloud busting the choice of our guest today becky frost who is the lead development worker at development plus who is going to be talking about project compass and of course uh, becky's colleague cj welcome back guys so i believe you work in close partnership with a number of local agencies absolutely lots of people there's quite a list isn't there cj yeah so um from obviously lincolnshire council lincolnshire city council and um, the nhs we have our own um sort of specific team the hhh which is the holistic healthcare for the homeless and um, they support us and a number of other um organizations around town um in kind of offering uh, physical and mental health um outreach care which is an absolutely amazing service lincolnshire police probation services um all of these people are um there essentially when when we need to call in on them um we are with you which is our local drug and alcohol support services as well so a whole range of people that are there to meet the needs of the clients that we work with because whilst a lot of what we do is the reactive stuff food and clothing straight away the 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 issues that we see they need support with are in a journey are much more nuanced and it's an ongoing process it's not just simply there and then it's and, and we were talking do. off air um ab about the fact that people genuinely want to help these people yeah. but there's a huge safeguarding issue about people that aren't trained that mm. aren't professionals um stepping in and perhaps causing themselves harm yeah there's a, there's a potential lots of the people who find themselves homeless come from really quite varied traumatic um, backgrounds and have, ha have had quite right. difficult experiences. They may well have been involved in the criminal justice system. Um, they may have had lots of troubles with their mental health. And 
So we wouldn't advise people to take things into their, their own hands by taking sandwiches out onto the street or anything else. What we'd say is signpost people to us mm. and we have got all of those professionals available to us to support that person in a, in a safe and controlled way. Mm. So what will users of the Alternative Giving Scheme do to help Project Compass? In terms of the, the funding? Mm. Really, it's about trying to make the best use of people's cash. So you could spend five pounds on some kind of meal deal, couldn't you? You know, a drink and some sandwiches and some crisps. Now, all that that's going to do is keep that person satisfied for an hour or so. And, and that's lovely, but it isn't helping that person to move on. Um, and actually what it's doing is keeping that person in the city centre away from the help that they need to make that decision mm. to move on. So what we'd say is with that five pounds, if you donated it to us, that can buy an enormous amount of tea bags, more than just one cup of tea, can't mm. it? And the milk and the coffee and the hot mm. chocolate. So by supporting us, we can do a lot with that money um, and we can offer something that just the food um, doesn't, which is all of that wraparound care, mm. the health care, that, you know, checking on somebody's feet, having a new pair of socks and looking at accommodation and doing referrals into accommodation for them. I mean, saying here that you can help fill in forms, for example, yes. which some people do struggle with, don't yeah, they? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we see, you know, we see people that, um, you know, quite simply might suffer from dyslexia or, or simply can't read and write. And so to just give somebody a form and go fill that in, it's not, you mm. know, we understand personally what a lot of these people will need so to, to give them the option go shall i sit and read this or it may be that that person actually needs some glasses yeah. they haven't been yes. in a position to yeah. go and get their eyes tested and to get some and and they, they simply can't see the small print so we're so, able to work with them so if somebody comes to you you know in dirty clothing they haven't had a shower in a long time can can, can they have a shower um so at the moment we've got um a lovely big toilet and wash area we're actually looking to have a shower installed very soon so um, that is going to be something that, that's available at the moment you can certainly have a strip wash and there's plenty of room to do it mm. and a brand new set of clothes and shoes which must make all it makes the difference a huge the difference world. we see people come out of the toilet like they're coming onto the stage to show us look i've had a shower and you know the hair's yeah. all clean and yeah. brushed and they smell fresh and they've and got they lovely clothes on as well, they? it really boosts everybody's mm. morale i mean mm. we love it we've given rounds of applause to people when they've come out of the shower before no, because nice. they've been so thrilled that they've been able to do it um and then that might allow that person to go to the council to make an application that they were ashamed to do before because they felt like mm. they looked mm. bad or that they were a bit mm. smelly. You know, we all would, would feel embarrassed. Um, so, so yeah, it opens doors. I mean, does Lincoln still have a big homeless problem? It's nothing like it was, I can say, with some certainty. So when I started the work five plus years ago, there really mm. was quite a sizable problem in Lincoln. Um, and it simply, it isn't as bad as it was. And the other thing is that we need to really thank all of the people who are involved who've worked okay. tremendously hard over the last five years. So Lincoln City Council Rough Sleeping Team have been absolutely and are brilliant. Um, the housing providers that we work with as well, like Nomad and YMCA and, and um, Framework, all doing fantastic work. And then there's us and then there's the NHS. You know, there are a lot mm -hmm. of people mm -hmm. working really really hard behind the scenes and i have to say I, I mean i don't go into lincoln often at night but i can noticeably see there is a difference even during the day yeah for the number of people because it is quite intimidating isn't it yes it can be and, and, yeah. and i was telling you earlier we visited a major city not too far from lincoln as we do once or twice uh, a year to mm. go shopping and there was literally homeless people in every shop doorway yes, to yeah. the point we did feel intimidated and to yeah. the point we said we're not going back. And, and it's not great for them, that, you know, to sit in a doorway all day. No. It's cold, it's drafty, yeah. it's damp and it, it's yeah. a miserable existence. So that's why we have our lovely lounge area where the guys can come in and quite often people will make themselves a hot drink, have that bit of toast, and they'll fall asleep. And we're absolutely open to people coming and having a really comfortable and safe sleep. I think that's, that says a lot, doesn't it? I think for them to be able to, to sort of come in, have a cup of tea, and then within minutes fall asleep, mm. to know that they feel totally safe and secure yeah, yeah. in that space. Yeah. And it's really, yeah, really nice to see. Let's take a short break, uh, have some music. Uh, 
My arm's been twisted. We're going to have to play Simply Red. <laughs> but I know you're not a fan, eh? You <laughs> but for Julie, this Thank is for you. you. <laughs> So, welcome back to Becky Frost, who's the lead development worker at Development Plus, who is going to be talking about Project Campus and, of course, a colleague, CJ. Welcome back, guys. Thank you. When, when you were talking earlier, you said about guys coming into the office and feeling mm. relaxed enough uh, to be able to go to sleep. And when you used the term guys, I thought, well, that, that could involve women as well. But do you get many women Rough sleep. Sleepers. Yeah, we, we do tend to say the guys, don't we? Yeah, and and yeah. Um, generally speaking, it is many more men, and we we have a few women come and go. But on the whole, it's it's men. And why do you think that is? And um, unfortunately, uh, what we see is the fact that it's not necessarily that there's less um, women that are homeless and um, what quite can quite often be the case is that women will kind of go to um, larger lengths to avoid actually sleeping on the streets as you can imagine it's incredibly dangerous for anyone and um, during the day but during the night you know it's just it doesn't even bear thinking mm -hmm. about so we what we actually see and from kind of doing this job and speaking to, to women that we come across is that um, women will actually go to kind of um, more extremes to avoid it by like staying in perhaps abusive relationships or getting into circumstances or relationships that might they might not necessarily want to be in or just to basically avoid it. They will go do, to, yeah, do you think that women are probably more likely to ask for help whereas a yeah. man's pride might prevent him? Yes and I think that that women will, as CJ said, do anything for it not to be an option. So they'll end up staying with friends or relatives or they will do anything to not be on the streets. There seems to be slightly less motivation. I'm not quite sure why for men. Maybe it's because they don't feel as scared, mm. although it is very worrying mm. about being on the streets. Well, interesting. So just to recap, um, I mean, really what you're saying is that don't give food donations to people on the street because one you don't really know whether mm -hmm. they're genuinely homeless yeah. or genuinely in need instead direct the funding towards you because you can use it properly you can signpost these people to the yeah. people they need to see and you're obviously feeding and um clothing people that come into the uh, office and it, uh, say it must be wonderful just to put a set of clean clothes on. We will stick with people for as long as it takes to try and get them off the streets. And I don't know whether this is an unfair question. From somebody first walking journey for somebody, but we will stick with people for as long as it takes to try and get them off the streets. And I don't know whether this is an unfair question. From somebody first walking through your door asking for help, how long a process is it? Okay, is that so easy to answer? It's or? how long is a piece of string? It depends very much on the needs of that person. You know, the the offers that are made to them need to, to accept that that person may or may mm. not be using drugs or alcohol, that they might have mental health difficulties, that perhaps they've been involved in violence, they may have come from another city. There are so many things that need mm. to be taken into account. A couple of days and they've gone. We've managed to get them straight into something and keep them safe. Other people we've worked with for, you know, months and months. It must be very rewarding then. And frustrating at the same time. Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if anyone wants to donate to, I think, what is a very worthwhile project, how can they do it? So we've got the, um, the QR code, which we spoke about earlier on, which um, perhaps we'll find some way of being able to share um, with your listeners. I don't know if that's even an option. If not, um, through that, all that really does is it, it sets up a pre-made message to your phone, mm. to the number. So um, the number is 70450 and all you have to do is text the word COMPASS um, to that number followed by the amount that you would like to donate and that goes um, straight to us and from there we're then able to utilise that. That's complicated for some people. Presumably they can just pop in and make they a donation. Of yeah. course. And you're based at 927 yeah. High Street, is that correct? Street, yes. Which is about, uh, it's opposite Scorer Street? Yes, on that's High right. Street. Yeah. Yeah. And we're on social media, you know, we, 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 we're, quite, we're quite active on there. We sort of share a lot about what we do, um, you know, the kind of things maybe 
what we need so we've had some instances quite recently where you know we've seen some atrocious weather and one day of torrential rain mm. has seen us give we out, cleared out we're completely right? cleared out of, of so many things and so for us to be able to that day say does anyone have any coats does anyone have any spare socks mm. you know all of those things and so it's a good way of keeping in in sort of up-to-date and, and please you know if you ever find yourself in those circumstances contact us we'll Absolutely. put a shout out we will yeah. but if people want to follow what we're doing and have a look at some photos they just need to go onto facebook and put project compass I and there's, there's a little icon that looks a bit like a, a compass or an arrow um and yes you'll get those kind of live updates about what we need that's right, brilliant yes. thanks very much it's been fascinating talking to you and uh, check out the facebook page or you can text uh, any donations to text the word compass to 70450 thanks for coming in and uh, we'll no doubt have a chat in the not too distant future lovely thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. thanks